Good morning, everybody, and welcome to day one of the lithium battery upgrade in my Winnebago Rialta. I'm not going to subject you to the disassembly uh, just because there's no point. I'll show you what I'm going to do, but I'm not going to make you watch me do it. Um, taking the seat out, stuff like that just isn't very interesting. But I will show you what we have going on here. By the way, this is one of the reasons that I love this little Rialta. Look how bright and open this area is. Now these couches fold down into a bed, um, which is extremely large uh, for one person especially, but um, it's just a nice, it's a nice layout. And, you know, I'll do another tour once I'm finished with everything, but the dining room table comes out and sits here. Anyway, that's not why we're here. So, right there is the Monster 300 amp hour lithium battery. That is where it's going to live. Um, I'm going to build a box to conceal it, and then it'll attach to the wall somehow, probably. And if I scoot it out of the way, this is the channel that I was mentioning. There is a water line that runs along here. Um, I'm actually going to move this so that I can run the cabling for the battery underneath the seat through that space. And then this, uh, the bottom half of the couch here comes off with just a few bolts, um, two on each side, and this lifts off completely. And that gives me easy access to this underneath section. Um, some of the things that we'll be doing are, oh, well, this is the existing DC uh, converter. So the AC comes in here, converts it to DC, which runs the DC uh, fuse panel, as well as charging the coach batteries that are up front. This is actually AC that comes in that powers this. So both of these things will go away to create more room. And then the, al the alternator, the inverter, will live in its place. And then on top of this box, this is actually the generator box. So underneath this metal container is the generator outside. So as you can imagine, it's pretty noisy and you have the possibility of um, exhaust fumes and stuff like that. It's pretty well sealed, but it's right there. So it's just kind of in your face. So the components will mount to the top of this. And so I will lay everything out so that I can make sure that there's enough space for them, but also uh, close enough to each other where I can wire them without using... I mean, when you're talking about a uh, high amperage draw like this, um, the shorter the wire, the better. So, you know, efficient placement is half the battle. Anyway, I'm going to get started on taking things apart, and I may even drop the generator. I might show you some of that, but... You know, again, I'm not going to make you watch me unbolt things and, and all of that. So I'm going to get started and I'll show you what we end up with. All right, so we have the channel removed. So you can see the water line here and then the space. Um, this battery is uh, water rated, or at least they claim it to be. So uh, I'm not too worried about that. And the cabling that I have is also water rated. So having it near the water line isn't an issue. Even if it breaks, it's not a big deal. Um, and frankly, I don't run the water that much anyway. So I'm not too concerned. Next, we have the underside of the seat. And this is the box that we'll be mounting things to. I had considered removing the box completely. Uh, making a floor to mount things onto, but I kind of like having it raised, but also replacing this box, um, trying to seal the outside from the elements and stuff. It was just going to be a big problem. So instead, this gives me something to mount things to. You know, I've got a lot of room underneath here if I need it, all this room up top. I just have to stay within the confines of the frame. Um, the face of it for the uh, inverter, I keep trying to call it an alternator. So what I will end up doing, and if, if you've been watching me for any amount of time, you know that being clean is like 
a big deal. So I'm going to clean this up first. I'm going to get the components and start kind of laying them out and um, see where things can go with you know proximity to the things that they need. So the wiring for the power is coming in from here, which means the breaker has to be somewhere over here. The bus bars should be somewhere centrally located, but I want to make sure that everything is wired efficiently. Um, you know, the inverter has to have power from the bus bars as well. So I'll just kind of lay things out without attaching them. And that gives me the opportunity to move things around into a place that really makes sense. So I'm going to get working on that, but first I'm going to clean this mess. All right, so I've brought in some of my parts to start laying out here. I don't know exactly where everything is going to go yet. Um, you know, it just kind of depends on space constraints and wiring constraints. I'll have to bring out my wiring to see. I bought various lengths of wiring, but uh, you know, I'll just have to see where it all goes. I haven't taken the generator out yet. It's a little chilly outside still, so I'm waiting for it to warm up just a bit. So this is the negative bus bar. And then I have the positive here as well. I bought the appropriately colored boxes. So I've got red and black. So uh, inside this is a bus bar with four um, individual terminals that I can mount things to. And that's nice uh, because you can put multiple things on it and get power, but you don't have to stack the the lugs on top of each other. And you can remove them individually, so I can remove one without removing another. So, um, and then, you know, they just look nice and it protects the, the connections from being touched accidentally. So I think that's just kind of the way to go. Next we have the DC to DC converter battery charger. And I mentioned before, this is a little guy. This is only 20 amps. Um, input side. And that just fits underneath that, so that's good. And then we have, I should probably show you some of this stuff. I have the circuit breaker. Um, this is a 200 amp with a switch to turn things off. This will be the first thing in the series. So the battery will run directly into this and then this will service the bus bar. Um, that way I can disconnect the battery completely from everything and it has surge protection, you know, it's a circuit breaker, so that will take care of that. So that will go on this side of things. I want it to be accessible, so I may, I may put it here. It looks like it's gonna clear that just fine. So that may just end up going there, and then I can lift the seat slightly and press the button or re-enable it. So that might be how that goes. And then that will run directly into the positive bus bar. So wherever that ends up going. Um, it's kind of like playing Tetris. You know, you're just moving stuff around and figuring out where it belongs. I also have the shunt for the monitoring system, which is the Renogy battery monitor. So this will mount up on the wall here, and there's a lead that runs to this, and this measures um, amperage, you know, power in, power out. Uh, this is the last, so where the, where the circuit breaker is the first thing in the chain, this is basically the last thing in the chain. So this the main negative off of the bus bar runs into this, and then this runs to the chassis so that it has um, one point of access to anything that's going in and out of the system. So that 
This is probably a candidate for mounting on the side here because my main negative bus bar for the uh, for the van itself is down here. So that's probably a good place for this just to keep it out of the way. So we'll see. We'll see where that goes. Um, the, al the alternator. See, I did it again. The inverter is fairly large and it will go on the side here where this equipment right here is. So I have to remove these items. This comes out pretty easy. And this has, I believe, and I'll verify this, but it has the power in from the AC. So if you plug into the generator, this lights up, or if you plug into shore power, uh, it lights up, which powers this to create DC power. Unfortunately, it only creates 13.6 volts and it's not regulated. So that's why we're doing this other stuff with the DC to DC converter. But this has um, power in from the AC. Since I won't be uh, using the generator, I don't need this to create my power. So this will come out. It has a line going to feed the 12 volt panel. And then it has the negative, and I believe it has a chassis ground as well. And so I'm gonna repurpose as much of this as I can. The shore power cord will remain intact for AC. And then um, the inverter will power the plug that the generator currently powers. So I'm just replacing the power source from the generator to the inverter. And then I can still use the shore, shore power cord to unplug it from the inverter and plug it into shore power. I rarely use shore power to begin with and i don't really even anticipate that but i would like to have it as an option so um you know for what it's worth i'll just I'll, I'll keep that functionality plus it just makes it easier to wire directly into the the outlet that the generator was running into so i'll just do that so i think that that's everything for now i guess i might go for a walk it's a really nice morning. Um, you know, I like to get out and uh, stay active while I'm up here. And it's still a little chilly outside to be working underneath the van or outside to drop the generator. So I'll mess around with this for a few more minutes and then um, we'll come back to it and probably do the generator next. Well, I didn't go for a walk. I went down a rabbit hole. I've been busy. So I've got the DC converter out uh, I've been verifying wiring. So this is inbound from the generator. So this will actually run into the inverter once I get it all done. And I'm already almost done with the generator dropping. I've got the door off. That's it sitting over there. And here we have the generator. So I've got the exhaust loosened up already. And then there's just four bolts that hold it in. One here, and there's one there, one in each corner. So I'll put my floor jack underneath it, along with a board to distribute the weight, and gently drop the thing down. Um, and then I have to disconnect fuel line and electrical and stuff like that. But I think I have to do that. Um, once I have it down, I need to finish taking off the exhaust also. Anyway, that's where we are for now. Well, the dirty work is done. I got the junction box removed. This is the inbound to the van from the generator. So this will actually plug into the inverter and then the inverter will supply power instead of the generator. But, the hard part is over, the dirty part is over, because that sucker is not inside anymore, and it goes right in there. So I'm going to clean up the door, um, I want to do a little bit of repair work on it, and then remount it. 
I have to figure out what to do with this thing. It's heavy, but not as heavy as I expected. All right, we are basically finished. I need to clean because I've got fingerprints everywhere, but I've got the panel back on and I can turn this into storage. I just need to get a plate to bolt up underneath that. And then I can use this to hold, you know, uh, an extra hose or uh, tarps or something like that. Something that's okay to be outside. My hands say that it's time to get cleaned up. I still have to drag this thing into the shed. But, uh, yeah, I think things are going pretty well. You know, it's funny, when you, or before you start one of these projects, it seems really daunting. And then once you get into it, you realize, oh, it's really not that difficult after all. Not that I'm saying that just anybody can do stuff like this, but um, it's not as hard as you would think. Anyway, I'm gonna get cleaned up and uh, probably have some lunch. It's, I don't even know what, again, I don't know what time it is. I'll uh, probably start on the positioning of the wiring and the components inside tomorrow. Maybe today, probably tomorrow. So, till next time, have a great day.